It was a silent evening over New York City in 1944. when a giant flash of light expanded in the middle of the city and caused chaos all over. An atomic bomb just exploded and wiped hundreds of thousands of people in its wake. Everyone was shocked. The Americ bomber planned by Nazi Germany was successful and changed the tide of the war in Germany's favor. Is what was supposed to be the plan of Eugene Sanger, along with his wife, who planned to develop this fast nuclear bomber. But all of this turned into a different story. As the present world of today talks about going hypersonic in flight with planes such as the Lockheed Martin SR-72, the son of the legendary SR-71 Blackbird, the successful X-15 that was able to break through Mach 6.7, and even hypersonic capable missiles, the possibilities with hypersonic flight is mind-boggling and quite fascinating at that. But before all of this ever happened, there was supposed to be a plane that could go hypersonic and bomb the U.S. completely to stop the American war machine into fully destroying the foothold that the Nazis had over Germany and all of Europe. This hypersonic aircraft could not only go to the U.S., but any place in Earth to deliver its payload, which was considered to be the first ever attempt into hypersonic flight, and the benefits that it can bring if one unlocks this ability. The Lend-Lease Act of the United States helped it greatly in changing the outcome of the war, as it enabled it to give war supplies to any nation considered vital to the defense of the United States. With weapons of all kinds surrounding Nazi Germany, they had a very tough time deciding what to do, nor how they were going to penetrate the defenses the Allied forces have laid down. So, they thought of going by air. The America Bomber Project was proposed as a means of quickly forcing the United States to withdraw from the war, as the Nazis were now on the defensive. While many different ideas, such as flying wings and enormous propeller planes, were put forth, the last one was actually the most absurd and bizarre of all. A space rocket jet that could theoretically bomb any place at any moment and go 160 kilometers above the Earth would have been hard to stop, and with the appropriate armament, it might have completely erased New York from the map. This is the story of the Silver Vogel, or Silver Bird, for instance, this silver bird wouldn't have even taken off from a runway. Instead, it would have powered up along a three-kilometer track with a rocket engine booster to push the main craft up to 1,930 kilometers per hour before going airborne. At the time, space travel was a completely novel idea that completely changed flight that had been previously pioneered. After taking off, the primary aircraft would have ignited its internal rocket motor to ascend to a height of 450,000 feet, or 145 kilometers, or 90 miles, straight up. Now that the rocket ship is moving at 21,800 kilometers per hour, it would have broken many speed records in the process of taking over the United States. But what truly becomes intriguing is what occurs next. With a steady glide, the Silver Bird would return to Earth and gradually re-enter the atmosphere, namely, the stratosphere. The aircraft would only be able to be described as bouncing as a result of the increasing air density, gradually increasing the friction on the bottom and creating lift. Nevertheless, the aircraft's speed would quickly translate into lift and a higher altitude, causing the Silver Bird to once again rise out of the Earth's sky. A further distance might be covered by repeating this process with the bounce. Although energy cannot be created from nothing and each bounce would be smaller than the previous one, scientists believe that this range extension would be sufficient to get it over the Atlantic and complete its mission, 
dropping a massive 4,000 kilogram bomb on New York. The nature of this mega bomb is unknown, but we do know that the Nazis were very close to discovering the formula to make nuclear weapons if the war had continued longer. The Silver Bird, now triumphant, would have continued to bounce and might have even had enough altitude to cruise over the northern Pacific and land somewhere in China under Japanese control. The crew would have been returned to Germany for another mission using conventional means, with the Silver Bird being packed up and transported by rail. It is also possible that this aircraft carried nuclear weapons on board. With five tons for life support, 90 tons of fuel, and an additional four tons for weapons, the Silver Bird was essentially a hundred-ton spacecraft. A television, or at the very least, a suggested film projector of some kind that operated via a crude periscope to offer the pilot a clear view of Earth, was supposed to show the pilot a view outside instead of a window. There wouldn't be many more comforts in the pressurized pilot's cabin, which would sleep one person and be encircled by coolant tubes for efficient heat control. There would be a storage space for food and drink during the lengthy journey, though. With space for 4,000 kilograms of armaments, the Bombay behind the pilot could have been guided to its target by remote television control. Although there were doubts about the precision and technology needed, the Nazis were rather pleased that the bomb would drop around 400 miles from its intended target. The spacecraft would also feature a basic flight control surface to direct it as it approached Japan, in addition to a tricycle landing gear that would be utilized upon arrival. Our tale of this insanity really started in 1942, when the Nazis had to find a way to defeat the Atlantic Ocean, their age-old enemy. The Nazis wanted a means for their planes to reach America's industrial base, which was located over the sea and far away from the front lines of the war in which America had just joined. The Nazis called this program the America Bomber and sent notice to their best engineers and aircraft companies to design an aircraft capable of carrying out this brutal mission. However, this time, Eugene Sanger, a rocket scientist, is the main focus rather than our usual suspects like Messerschmitt or Junkers. Before the war, Sanger, a talented rocket scientist, rose to prominence with his thoughts about utilizing rockets to break through atmospheres. His output was so prolific that he was compared to von Braun and enlisted into the same Nazi war machine. During the development of the V-1 rocket, he discovered that if the rocket entered the Earth's atmosphere at a certain angle, it would bounce off the increasing atmosphere like a pebble does off the surface of a lake. And perhaps even those bouncers could be translated into further distance. Ironically, this would become a deep rivalry, but we'll get to that later. With this concept in mind, Sanger submitted his suborbital glider plan to the RLM in December 1941 along with a request for a sizable fund to construct a prototype under the heading of rocket propulsion for long-range bombers. Unfortunately, the 900-page proposal was met with disapproval by RLM because of its size, complexity, and the reality that Germany was losing the war. The study described the antipodal long-range glider and the Intercontinental Long Range Glider, two manned versions and one unmanned variant. At home, the German government concealed the report from everyone without top secret clearance and kept it under surveillance 24 hours a day because it was so divisive. They didn't appear to spend much time before they started working on this plan. Not really though, after realizing that it would be better to postpone the launch of these new super weapons in 1945 rather than completing them hastily while working on various ramjet engines. Sanger and Brett, who were working on various ramjet engines, 
were moved deep into the Alps. One day, they simply stood up from their workshop, walked out together over a mountain pass, and into the waiting arms of the U.S. troops, effectively defecting in order to escape the approaching Soviets. Speaking of the Soviets, the 400-page study they authored a year earlier would come back to haunt them very soon. By this time in the war, the Russians had taken control of many aircraft plants and had the memo outlining Sanger's idea. Stalin became highly intrigued very soon and asked to meet with the Apollo Bureau and his secret police. They talked about how, although the V-2 design that von Braun had stolen was intriguing, it lacked the range to attack anyone outside of Poland. To counter America, they would need something akin to the Silver Bird. So why not assemble the Sanger and Brett team that was responsible for building the Nazi version to build the Russian version? Stalin dispatched his son and a number of operatives to France in order to find them because he considered his mission to be of utmost importance. French counterintelligence shielded Eugene Sanger and Irene Brett since they had both been hired by the French Air Ministry to create a supersonic fighter. By an unforeseen turn of events, the French learned of this scheme in advance and transported them both at midnight, hiding them in a farmhouse while the Soviets searched in vain for their whereabouts. After that, Advances in jet engine technology and the development of the ICBM caused Stalin to lose interest in the project that had saved Sanger and Irene's lives. Eventually, Sanger would make his way back to the newly formed Western Germany, where he and his spouse worked on a number of space-related projects and even developed the concept of solar sails to go to other stars. Regarding the Silverbird, the efforts would not go to nothing because in the end, NASA used its concepts to build the space shuttle. Although the events that occurred stopped the Silbervogel from ever flying, what would have happened if it actually flew for Nazi Germany? Well, documents that have been discovered states that the initial computation for Sanger and Brett's plane was a little off, and that the initial heat being received by the plane would have made the first bounce harsher than what was initially expected. Meaning to say, if it bounced once, the aircraft would have been fully disintegrated and burnt in the atmosphere. It's very likely that even though they could have created a rocket ship space plane, it would have only been used for science. The problem could have been solved and eliminated by augmenting the heat shield, much like that which we saw with the space shuttle but this would have significantly reduced the craft payload capacity, reducing its use for the intended mission of destroying distant targets. Are you interested in strange planes developed during World War II? Then you'd love this one, which showcased the first ever flying wing design and was also a wonder weapon of the Germans. <laughs>